right, so good morning, everyone. My name is Jesse, and I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. For those joining us for the first time, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world. Today, we're doing a little bit of all three, so it's really exciting. Um, and so right now, we are joined by six classes from across North America, and I want to give them a chance to say hi. And uh, so, yeah, we've got Miss Stouffer's grade twos in Lakanto in Florida. Hi, guys. Hi. 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 We've got uh, Miss uh, Furnival's grade kindergarten through grade threes in Guelph, Ontario, all sorts of kids. Hi, guys. Hi. Wow, there's so many of you. All right, we've got uh, Miss McLaughlin's grade twos and sixes in St. Catharines in Ontario. Hi, guys. Hi. Awesome, welcome in. We've got Miss Allen's grade fours in House Springs in Missouri. Hi, guys. Hi, Miss Trevino's grade four is in San Antonio in Texas. Hi, guys. Uh, hey, this is such an enthusiastic day. I love it. And last but not least, we've got Miss Cacciotti's grade four is in Ottawa, Ontario. Hi, guys. <laughs> hey, oh, there we go. Oh, and we, we just had our, our seventh class join us, too. We have Miss Reeves' grade four is in Leamington, Ontario. Hi, guys. If you can hear me and do a shout out, welcome in. Um, okay, of course, the reason you guys are all here today is for our speaker. So we are joined live by Ali at the Toucan Rescue Ranch in Costa Rica. So for 15 years now, they have been rescuing, rehabilitating, re-releasing amazing wildlife in one of the most biodiverse places in the entire world. Uh, they specialize in toucans, sloths, and owls, but they welcome in wildlife from all over the region. And today we're going to dive in and explore the facility a little bit and really focus on one of the coolest animals in the whole world. As without further ado, I'll turn it over to Ali. Thank you so much for joining us and take it away. Hi everyone. This is Denise and she'll Hi. be our virtual tour guide today. She'll be telling you all about the sloth. All Hello. Right. <laughs> Hi sloth lovers. Does everybody love sloths? We sure Hello? do. <laughs> all right. Okay, so I've been working with the babies here for a little over a year. And these are some of the ones that we refer to as our teenagers. You can see they're eating alone. And so um, we're showing some of their natural behaviors while we tell you all about them. First of all, as Jesse said, we're the Toucan Rescue Ranch in Costa Rica. And we rescue all sorts of wildlife. But we especially rescue sloths because they take a little more time than the other animals. So we were founded in 2004. We're called the Toucan Rescue Ranch because our founder, Leslie Howell, decided to start rescuing toucans. But a few years later in 2007, Minai, the wildlife agency that controls wildlife here, asked her if she'd take a sloth. And she said, well, maybe an adult. Well, they brought her a little sloth, a little baby. And so that baby is now 12 years old. Her name is Millie. And she's one of our residents here. But since Millie, we've gotten many, many baby sloths. What happens is they're all orphaned. Their mother has been killed by a dog, electrocuted by a power line or hit by a car. And so they come to us and they need to be, get a second chance at life because they, we really, really do the best we can. And our ultimate goal is to get them back out into the wild. For sloths, it takes two years. So it's a very intense program and we make sure that we keep them wild and that we introduce them to all the things that they would need to become wild sloths. So these guys are about a little over a year old. This is Anise or volcano girl, the big fuzzy one. And she was found on the slope of a volcano with covered in volcanic ash and mom wasn't around. And the other one you're seeing is Aria. Her mother was killed by a dog. So let me tell you some all sorts of facts just generally about sloths. So um, we have two types of sloths in Costa Rica. In Central and South America, there are actually six types, but we have two types and sloths are split into two different groups. One is called two-fingered or two-toed and one is called three-fingered or two-toed. Uh, three-toed. We refer to them as finger because actually two-toed sloths have three toes. They have two fingers. So it's kind of confusing. So we refer to them because their front claws are two. You, you can see with Aria right here that she has two claws. So anyway, so these guys are 
um, they're a little bit larger and they're a little bit more aggressive than the other type of sloth that you might be used to, the three-toed or three-fingered sloth. And um, so they have a lot of big differences. We get more of these because they occur at higher altitudes and we're at a cooler area than the other sloths uh, occur. So the other sloths we get on occasion, but these are the ones that we usually get. So sloths have very different things from a lot of other mammals. They are a mammal, but they have a lot of characteristics that are different that other mammals have. One thing is that they have different types of vertebrae in their neck. And these guys, most mammals have seven vertebrae in their neck, including humans and giraffes, but these guys have two less. And that's probably because as you can see, little Anise is showing you how they like to hang upside down. And they also have like membranes inside their, uh, you know, inside their body that anchor their organs to their um, rib cage. And that way they don't get, you know, their organs don't get squished. And so um, anyway, and you can see they have a very large belly. Sloths are adapted to living up in the canopy of the tree. And so they have the various adaptations that allow them to stay in the canopy of the tree and only come down once every seven to 10 days to go to the bathroom. So one of those adaptations is a very, very large belly. It's four chambered. It digests food very slowly. It can take a leaf up to a month to get digested. And so the only time sloths like to come down out of the tree because they feel protected up in the trees is when they come down to go to the bathroom. And like I said, that's once every seven to 10 days. So um, they're, they're, these guys are omnivores, whereas the other sloths are herbivores. And the cool thing about these guys and the other type of sloth that we rescue is that they are part of a program called Saving Sloths Together. We've partnered with the Sloth Institute of Costa Rica, which is in Manuel Antonio on the Pacific side. And so what we do is we both, both foundations get um, baby sloths that come to us as orphans. We raise them. And while we're raising them, once again, we make sure that they stay wild, that they don't get used to humans. And then they get released at two years of age at either our, of our release sites, depending on what part of the country they came from. If they came from the Pacific side, they go back to the Sloth Institute. If they came from the Caribbean side, our um, our release site is on the Caribbean slope, and that's up in a place called Sada Piki. They go into huge cages and, well, actually more enclosures where they're in the middle of the jungle. They become wilder and wilder, and then at about two years of age, they get released. They would be with their mom for two years, so that's why this is the perfect age to release them and become solitary animals. Sloths are solitary animals, but... Um, when they come in as orphans because they miss their mothers and they're confused by bright lights and creatures that they have no idea what they are, meaning humans and a lot of noises. It's nice when the babies come in with another second baby um, around the same time, even though sloths have one baby at a time, a lot of times we get babies around the same type of time of year. And so they get to um, have another baby to hug. By the time they're two and they're going out into the wild, they're independent and they're wild. And this tree is one of the ways that we get them used to um, becoming wild sloths. Sloths are not tame. They are, don't make good pets, which is why we make sure that people know that you would never want a sloth as a pet. And um, they, you know, they are, uh, well, here we go. Here's Aria. She's saying, yeah, that's me. Anyway. Um, when they get released, they get released with a radio collar and we track them for at least five months. That way we know that they've successfully adapted into the jungle. And so we can ensure that the program that we're doing is successful. It has been very successful. And um, anyway, so we, once again, when they're babies, we encourage them to exhibit natural behaviors, to learn natural behaviors which include them coming down to the ground to potty. And we train them how to do that. 
eating leaves. We also offer vegetables. This type of sloth, like I said, is an omnivore. The other type is an herbivore where they only eat leaves. But these guys eat leaves and fruit, insects and bird eggs. And so we want to be sure that they're familiar with what they're going to be eating in the wild. Um, do you guys uh, have any questions or do you want me to keep going? You, you're really good for time. If you want to tell us a little bit more, we can definitely do a few more minutes and then we'll dive into questions. Okie doke. All right. So um, we have a couple of babies that are about six weeks old and two months old right here that you can see. They didn't come from the same mom. Sloths rarely have two babies. They usually just have one. And so Howie, who's looking up at the camera right now, is about two months old. And Kevin, who is eating part of a flower, is about six weeks old. So you can see how nicely they adapt to having each other to hug since they don't have a mom. So we, um, we like to be sure that they stay warm. You can see their blankets and we offer them leaves. You can see they're getting the leaves. So at a very early age, they, um, they get introduced to leaves. You'll see that this type of sloth also has teeth. Let's see if Howie, maybe we can get a leaf near Howie and see if he'll eat it. He loves leaves and you might be able to see his teeth. This type of sloth, like I said, has four little front teeth that I call staple removers. And all sloths have the back grinding teeth, kind of like our molars that allow us to chew veggies or if we're chewing a piece of celery or something. So that's another difference between the two fingered and the three fingered sloths is their teeth. Um, I mentioned that these guys have two less vertebrae than other mammals. And the other type of sloth, like the one you saw in Zootopia, if you saw the movie Zootopia, actually has two extra cervical vertebrae in their neck. So if you reach back into your neck and you feel those little bumps in your neck, those bones, those are your cervical vertebrae. So imagine that we have the same number as the giraffe, and yet sloths have a different number. So the other kind of sloth, we don't have any right now because all of our three-fingered sloths have been released, but um, those type of sloths are the ones that only eat leaves and they probably have the extra vertebrae so they can reach around for more leaves. They can turn their head like an owl. So it's pretty cool. So those guys also have very soft, long gray fur, whereas these guys have more fur that's kind of fuzzy and like a dog, maybe like a husky or a German shepherd. So anyway, um, there, let's see, there are other differences, but once again, there are also similarities. All sloths have a large stomach that allows them to stay up in the trees, like I was saying, for long periods of time, because they don't like anybody. They don't even like other sloths. They are very solitary. And that's why we also tell people to please not go to a place that allows a sloth selfie because selfies are really, really bad to sloths. They don't like being with humans. They don't even like being with other sloths. And it's just like if you have a pet at home that's nervous about other people, why would you want to let other people come into the house and pet or hold your dog or your cat if they're very shy? And that's what we say about sloths. They're an animal that is not used to other animals. They're not used to people. And so we ask you to please, please, if you ever come to a country that has any kind of wild animal, to leave them alone and just appreciate them from a distance, but do not touch them or hold them. Even here, there are very few people who can come into contact with them. And that's only when they're babies and to make sure that they're getting the proper food. Outstanding. So I'm really, I'm really yeah. happy you got that message in. That's really nice, and 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 especially at a rescue ranch like this, where they are so cute. Um, it's great to, to get that across. All right. Thank uh, you. Let's uh, dive in with questions. That was amazing. We really did an, uh, an exhaustive look at that amazing class. Uh, before we dive in, I want to note we've got a few classes watching YouTube live right now. So we've got Miss Engram's group uh, from Houston, Nova Scotia, Miss Burgett's group from Brantford, Connecticut, and Miss Pettit's group from Round Rock in Texas. If there's anyone else, just let me know where you guys are joining from. Pass along some questions and I'll happily share them. 
Uh, but yeah, let's start and dive in with one of our live classes with uh, Miss Stoper's class. If you guys want to kick us off with a question, come on up. Hi, my name is Carson. What do they use their, um, like, how do they hang on to, like, trees upside down with just their feet? Yeah. Great question, Carson. Okay, so you really, really got the sloth. They, their whole life is hanging upside down. They love to hang upside down. And how they do that is that they have those very sharp claws but believe it or not, if an adult claw, a sloth of this type grabbed your finger, he could break it because that's how strong they are. They don't have a lot of muscles, but they have very strong tendons and that's how they're able to hang on. So you can see with Aria here, how she's pinching that, that rope there, you can see. And so they, they do prefer to hang upside down. And another thing is, like I kind of mentioned a little bit earlier, they have these membranes kind of like, you know, under your tongue, you have that piece of skin that anchors your tongue to the bottom of your mouth. That's kind of like what they have. And that keeps their, their um, stomach and their heart and everything from getting crushed by, uh, you know, actually by the stomach when it's full because they have a very full stomach and that's because they only come down to the bathroom once every seven to 10 days. So can you imagine how heavy that stomach is? It actually takes up like two thirds of their body. Did I answer your question? Yeah, I think you did a great job. That was fantastic. Uh, yeah, we got a big thumbs up. All right, uh, let's go to our second class. Miss Furnival's class, if you guys have a question, if one of your 80,000 children has a question, Come on up. All right. We probably have about 60 questions here, but we will ask one. All right. Okay, go for it. How fast do these sloths compare to a human? Oh. oh, are you kidding me? Come on. <laughs> you know that we have the sloth Iron Man games coming up. So you could actually see how sloths, how fast sloths go. But actually, they're a little bit slower than a human. This type of sloth is faster, believe it or not, than the other type of sloth that a lot of people are used to. The other type of sloth is the slowest mammal on earth. These guys are about the third slowest. So you'd be amazed with these guys, how fast they go. However, they can't go on the ground very fast. They're built for hanging upside down. But I guarantee you that if you were in a tree they would probably go faster than you because they really, really are adapted to hanging. And like I said, this type of sloth, when they want to move, they can move. But on the ground, they kind of pull themselves around if they're flipped over. So anyway, but, um, but yeah, so they probably, as far as running, well, you'll just have to check into our Sloth Ironman games at the end of this month. Okay, we can't wait. I have to ask as a follow-up question, what's the second slowest mammal? If the sloths are one and three, what's number two? I heard, now I could be wrong, but, you know, Google, but uh, I heard that it was pandas. Now, I okay. think koalas are around there somewhere, too. Okay, well, well, we'll ship some over from China to participate in the games, okay? All right. Okay. Uh, Let's go to Ms. Reeves class. If you guys have a question, come on up. And so Ms. Furnival too, I will come to you guys a few times because I know you've got like 23 classes in there. So don't worry, we'll get more questions from you than no. Ms. Reeves class, you guys, Mike is leaving right now. There you go, you're good to go. Um, my question, my name is Angelina. My question is like, do the sloths ever get scared to go up the tree? Ah, do sloths ever get scared to go up the tree? Well, hi, Angelina. Great question. They don't get scared to go up the tree very often. They actually are more scared to come down the tree because that's where the dangerous animals usually are. So, um, but the babies are a little nervous and that's why we train them when they're babies, how to climb trees, how to climb vines and branches. And so 
with a baby, yeah, just like any baby, like learning to walk with these guys learning to climb, it gets a little scary for them. But then if we make something nice and available, nice and tasty, like you might see them eating some pink hibiscus flowers right now, that's great incentive for them to climb. But like I said, usually, and maybe that's also kind of like, since they're upside down, it's almost like they're climbing the tree upside down. Did I totally confuse you? Anyway, um, they they are more nervous coming down out of the tree because that's they know where that's most of the danger. Yeah, great answer. All right, I'm Ms. McLaughlin's you. class. Yeah, thank you so much. Ms. McLaughlin's class, if you guys want to come up, go for it. Yeah, how long does it take us to climb up a tree? Yeah. How long does it take us to come down a or, tree? Or climb or up. up. I think it's climb up. Yeah. Oh, back up. Oh, okay. Okay. Climb up. Um, this type of sloth can go fairly quickly. So I would say maybe a minute. And like I said, this type of sloth is much faster, relatively speaking. We're, we are talking about sloths, but this sloth is much faster than the other type of sloth. The other type of sloth probably takes, oh, maybe 30 minutes. Okay. But these guys are pretty quick. Very cool. Um, I'm gonna take a question from a group online too. Ms. Engram's class wanted to ask, uh, how big do sloths get? Well, they get to be about, I believe, about 15 to 18 pounds. And so these guys have quite a while, quite a ways to go to get to that size. They're about seven and eight pounds. So they're about half the size of an adult sloth. And the other type of sloth, probably maybe a little bit less only because they're thinner and their arms are longer, but their bodies are thinner. These guys have a pretty hefty little body. Of course, most of that is stomach. Very cool. All right, let's go to Miss Allen's group. If you guys have a question, go for it. What made you want to have this job? What made you want to have this job? Oh, what made me want to work with sloths? Yep. Well, I was a zookeeper at the San Diego Zoo for 24 years. And I worked with everything from hummingbird orphans I raised to a baby giraffe, but I never worked with a sloth. And I always wanted to come visit Costa Rica. So I heard that they, there was an opportunity to come and volunteer. And so since I was retired from the zoo, I thought, you know, I may be retired, but I still wanna work with animals. And that's also a shout out to anybody who is interested in volunteering once you turn 18. We always are happy to take volunteers. We've got a great program. I've been volunteering here for over a year and I hope to be here for a lot longer. Thanks, Danny, what a great story. All right, uh, Ms. Trevino's class, if you guys want to come up, go for it. Hello, my name is Jalen. How long, how long can sloths live up to? Oh, very good question. Okay, so in the wild, they live about 25 years. In captivity, they've been known to live between 40 and 50 years for this type of sloth. For the other type of sloth, maybe about 30 in captivity. But the nice thing about sloths is that they do have a very quiet lifestyle and they remain hidden from predators for the most part between being so slow. That's one reason why they're so slow and they don't come down out of the tree very often. Sorry about that. We've got some macaws in the background that want to be part of the program. Um, anyway, and so because of that, they're fairly long lived, even though, um, you know, they, they, aren't able to um, you know, protect themselves from some of the predators, although they stay hidden. And that's why they also have like algae growing in their fur because they've learned a way to survive and to live a long, long, healthy life, hopefully. And that's what's so cool about the babies that we get that you know, after they lost their mothers, they wouldn't have made it except by coming to rescue places like this 
they get a second chance. And so maybe they will get to live about 30 years. Outstanding. Uh, I love that you mentioned that they grow algae in their fur. So imagine being so slow that plants and stuff start growing in your hair. That's a great indication of, of the kind of animal they are. Fantastic. All right. Uh, one last question in our, our first round of questions from Miss Cacciotti's class. If you guys want to come up, go for it. Yeah, you're good to go. Do, do wild sloths, sorry, repeat that? You Can you guys hear that at the rescue ranch? Sorry. For I, I just heard do wild sloths ever, but I didn't hear the yeah. rest. Do they ever leave where they were born? Ah, great question. Thank you. <laughs> do they ever live where, or leave, leave where they were born? Yeah. Do they, yes, do they migrate yes, they, anywhere? They, they do. They um, have a territory. And so they would probably go once they've separated from mom or once they've been released at our facility. They will go off into the jungle and find their own territory that they establish. And you'd be amazed how large that territory can be. They don't just hang out all the time. They actually move around from tree to tree. And so that way, um, you know, they can get the, the young leaves from different trees. But unfortunately, that's where our impact has, you know, human, human uh, encroachment has impacted their lives because they do like moving from tree to tree. And so sometimes if we've taken down the trees to, you know, put in a road or a farm or something, then they don't have that other tree to get to without having to either come down to the ground like a, you know, and possibly get attacked by a dog or one of the large cats here. Or they think that a power line that's going through the jungle is a vine and they'll cross that and if they touch two power lines they can become electrocuted or they might have to cross a road so they do travel and that's sometimes what gets them in trouble if we humans have made our convenience more of a um a detriment to their habitat and that's why we have to really really try to preserve their habitat as much as possible outstanding i'm really glad we got that in um, all right, Ms. Pettit's class uh, online from Texas wanted to ask, how much do sloths eat each day? Oh, gosh, good question. You know, they eat about 100 to 200 calories. That's not a lot. That's like 15 gummy bears. And so, um, you know, they, not that they eat gummy bears, but, um, you know, I was looking up because I was trying to figure out with these guys how much they eat. They get green beans and and cook carrots. So I plugged in about how much, you know, relatively speaking, maybe, maybe 10 almonds or something. So um, because they have such a slow metabolism and it takes so long to digest their food, they don't have to eat a lot of calories. And although this type of sloth actually needs a little bit more protein, if you guys probably know what protein is. And so that's why in the wild, they would eat bird eggs and we give them scrambled eggs when they get to a point that they go off of their milk when they're not being fed their milk anymore. So yeah, so I would say throughout the day they probably eat about a handful of green beans and a handful of carrots that have been cooked and then of course a bunch of leaves. Very cool. All right, we're going to go through a second round of questions with our live classes. Maybe take a couple more on YouTube as we've got nine classes watching there. Uh, so please do pass those along. And then if you guys want to, I mean, you guys are asking some amazing sloth questions. If you want to ask about the rescue ranch in general, you're welcome to do that too. But with that said, let's start again with Miss Stouffer's class. If you guys want to come up and have a second question, go for it. My name is Kelvin. What is the predators? Ah, what eats sloths? Oh, what a great question, Calvin. Okay, you guys are coming up with some great questions. All right, well, in some countries, the biggest predator for sloths is a harpy eagle. It's huge. It probably stands as high as me. Of course, I'm not very tall, but still, it's a big, big bird. And so they will swoop down on the treetops and they'll grab the sloths out of the trees. Um, here in Costa Rica, we don't have harpy eagles, so there might be other types of hawks that might swoop down when there's a mom at the top of the trees getting some sun, baby is on her belly, and so it might swoop down and grab the baby. This type of sloth is, can be very aggressive. They can fight back a lot, 
So they do put up quite a fight if there is an animal that's attacking them. Here, unfortunately, the biggest predator at this point is dogs. You know, they're, they could be a pet dog, they could be a feral dog, but when the sloths come down out of the tree, which they don't like to do, but they have to, to go to the bathroom, dogs will attack them. They will fight back. This type of sloth has those sharp claws. They've got those four front teeth that are very sharp and pokey and they're not afraid to use them, but they, they still get predated by some animals. There are jaguars and pumas here, maybe a boa constrictor. So yeah, they do have some predators, but fortunately for them, they have ways of hiding from the predators and being sure that predators don't know that they're not around. So actually the biggest impact on their populations aren't other mammal predators, but even though we're mammals, humans, we don't predate them, but we do things that impact their lives. Yeah. And so, um, but yeah, but I would say like, you know, eagles and cats and stuff. Very cool. I'm glad you brought up humans though. And this is something we see whenever we do a conservation session is that humans are always the biggest impact. So it's sad, but it also means that there's a lot that we can do to actually really positively impact conservation for things like sloths. So thank you guys. Um, all right, Miss Furnival's class. I'm going to go to you guys now and then I'll come back to you guys at the very end, okay? But yeah, come on up if you have a question in the meantime. Sounds great. Yep. Can sloths swim? Huh. Oh, yes. What a great question. They are amazing swimmers. They might swim if they occur in an area that's islands and they're, or they're mangrove swamps. They can swim from island to island. They could also drop into the water if there's a predator that's trying to get them. And amazingly, they can hold their breath for 40 minutes underwater. Wow. So they can really, yeah, that's pretty incredible. So imagine 40 minutes, that's like a half hour and 10 more minutes. So um, yeah, they're, they're very good swimmers. They're much better swimmers than crawlers. So very good question. Do you have a, a swimming challenge in the Ironman uh, games or just, just, we never? don't, <laughs> oh, maybe next year. Yeah. The thought. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> We'd pay to see that. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Miss Reeves class. If you guys want to come up, go for it for a second question. Hi, my name's Adam. I was wondering if a sloth climbs a tree and then a different animal goes into the tree, would they fight? <sighs> they could. Very good question, especially if it's another sloth. They don't like each other. They want to stay far away from each other. So many times male sloths might fight. And um, I don't know if any other animal would really want to fight with the sloth. They probably think they're part of the tree. Monkeys and sloths share the same habitat, but monkeys are so fast and they're busy chasing, you know, after birds or whatever that I don't know if sloths really do that much fighting with other animals, but they definitely fight with other sloths. Very cool. All right. Uh, let's go to Miss McLaughlin's class. Come on up, guys. I love these questions, by the way. You guys have been really enthusiastic and fantastic. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you. Go ahead. <laughs> um, how do you know when a sloth is ready to be released in the wild? Great question. Yes, a very good question. Well, we go by age because they, they tend to follow the same pattern, but we also go by, by weight and behavior. And that's why we give them the radio collars. And what we do is when we take them up to one of the release sites, then they're monitored by a sloth team up there and they're given their radio collars. And then they start opening and letting the sloths venture out of the enclosures and they can come back in again. They leave the doors open and there's always somebody tracking their, their um, path and their behavior and their activities. And so little by little, they start staying out more. We provide food available that they're used to, the cooked carrots and green beans. But of course, we also have introduced the wild leaves that they'd be eating in the area already. They've been getting them since they were babies. And so we just monitor them. And if it looks like one is having problems, we just, you know, might hold it back or we'll just give it a chance and um, 
see what happens. And if they don't do well, we can always bring them back and give them a little bit more time. And then we put them back out again because our whole goal is to rescue, rehabilitate, and release animals and sloths in particular, but also a whole lot of other animals. We just get a lot of sloths and uh, back into the wild. That's our goal. So um, we do, you know, like I said, more than sloths, we do porcupines and anteaters and armadillos and parrots, but um, sloths just take a little bit longer. So their program is a little bit more intensive, but um, yeah, very good question. And we always watch their progress. And if it looks like they're ready to go and we, we release them in teams, in groups of babies that they were raised with, and then they'll separate, but um, they, you know, we watch them and make sure they're, they're good to go. And then we take the radio collars off after about five months, provided that they're doing well and they're acting like a wild sloth. Very cool, all right. We're gonna dive into four more questions. So we're gonna start with Ms. Allen in Missouri. If you guys have a second one, come on up. I know you do because you have all the papers. <laughs> Hi, my name's Henry and I was wondering how can we better protect wildlife? Very good. We love those kind of questions. Um, the best thing is, of course, to reduce, reuse, recycle. Be aware of what you're doing to the environment. Try to not use plastic that much. If you um, are interested, you could always like adopt, you know, a sloth, well, virtually adopt a sloth. Of course, they stay and you just watch their progress. Um, and yeah, just be very aware of how you're impacting your environment. If you come to places like Costa Rica or you know people who are, educate them about what, you know, what needs to be done for, for um, saving sloths and other animals. And, you know, just let people know that, you know, they don't want a wild animal as a pet. They don't want to go take a selfie, at, you know, just to put it on some type of social media. And so there are just a whole lot of things. You can donate. We have, um, we don't get any funding from the government. And so everything that we do with our, our animals is um, through donations. And so sometimes classrooms will virtually adopt a sloth or they'll do a fundraiser like a bake sale and, and send medical supplies or specialty foods that we don't have available here in Costa Rica. And so um, just, every, you know, little, little steps, you can do something big or you can do something little, but everything comes together and impacts wildlife. So thank you for asking that question. Yeah, outstanding. All right, uh, Ms. Trevino's class, if you guys wanna ask another, come on. Everybody's got questions. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Forever, and what can people do to help the sloths? Um, like I was saying, you can, you know, we have our, believe it or not, we've, we've designated this as uh, International Sloth Month. And on the October 20th is International Sloth Day, which kicks off our Sloth Ironman games. So you could go there, you could buy, we have some Sloth Iron Man t-shirts that are available and all the proceeds go to help save the sloths. Um, once again, you could um, tell people about, you know, sloths and, and let them know that they don't want to touch or hold a sloth if they ever go somewhere. Um, once again, uh, you could become a wildlife warrior and, and do something with your classroom or with your you know, scout troop or whatever, and um, maybe raise some money and send it in donations or, um, you know, we have an Amazon wish list. So, so yeah, and once again, just like with any wildlife, you just wanna really, really be aware of what you're doing, how you're impacting the environment. Don't release balloons, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. I mean, we don't realize that some of the things we do impact wildlife. And so um, anyway, but yeah, so just check in into our Sloth Ironman games and, and maybe you'll get some ideas. Marvelous. And we'll pass that along in an email at the end of the session too, so you can find out more about the Toucan Rescue Ranch and the Ironman games and all sorts of great stuff. Uh, but yeah, let's do our second last question, Ms. Cacciotti's class. If you guys want to come up, go for it. So yeah, for whatever reason, your mic's a little iffy. So just come really, really close to the camera, okay? Are sloths endangered? 
Are sloths endangered? Great question. They, as far as their habitat, it's, um, you know, it's threatened with more and more, um, you know, encroachment by humans. And um, they're not endangered, but they are becoming more threatened by the illegal pet trade. Everybody, you know, thinks they want a sloth or not everybody, but a lot of people. And so unfortunately it's impacting wild sloth populations. And so while they aren't endangered because of their way that they survive, um, they still are being impacted and they could become endangered at any point as long as humans and, uh, you know, and, and our, the, our ways that we um, go around and, and impact the environment are affecting them. So they're not endangered, but now that they're really popular, we really are worried about, um, you know, people wanting to take them out of the wild. Yeah, well, that's what feeds into the questions before that about how you can protect them. So I'm really glad we got those in. Um, and all right, we're gonna take one last question before we wrap up Ms. Furnival's classes. Uh, come on up for one more and uh, go for it guys, to end this off. All right, we have one last question. Thank you so much. This has been amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Our questions have been answered. Yes, it's one. How many insects live in a sloth? Oh gosh, there's so many insects <laughs> that live in sloths. It depends on what area they're from. And so um, I think that'd be a great science project for you. Maybe to find out and then you could let us know. But there are sloth moths that live their whole life in on a sloth. Um, I was talking about the algae and the bugs live in the sloths. And when the sloths come down to pee and poo, the uh, beetles or moths will come down and lay their eggs in the pile of poo. The eggs will hatch and they, the larvae will feed on the poo because it's a nice rich environment with lots of good bug stuff. And then they'll either fly up or crawl up on the sloth the next time it comes down. So, um, I don't know the exact number, but there's a lot. All right. A lot of different types. Outstanding, guys. You know, in terms of just the, the video and the amazing questions, this is one of the best sessions ever. So thank you guys so, so much for taking part. Uh, for all our classes, too, before we wrap up, I just want to say, and I'll pass this along in an email as well, but for groups on YouTube, uh, toucanrescueranch.org. So you can find it about the Ironman Games. You can find it how to donate. You can find it about all the amazing conservation work they do. And actually, out of curiosity, because all the classes had more questions than we could possibly get to today, can they ask questions online to you guys? Or you guys, you answer anything online? Yeah, um, our, our social media gal is nodding, so we'll figure out uh, what we need to do. I'm happy to answer questions, and I know the other volunteers and uh, people who work here are definitely happy to, you know, answer questions and uh, educate more people about sloths. So ask away. Outstanding. I, the question I want to ask is, how happy on a scale of 1 to 10 is that sloth scratching himself? He is very satisfied. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd say <laughs> off the charts. Off the charts. Off, off the charts happiness. <laughs> Outstanding, guys. Well, for all our classes, what we do at the end of every hangout, you guys know this. I'm going to demute everyone's microphone in a second. So, boys and girls, if you guys can get ready to say a huge thank you with me uh, to the ladies at the Toucan Rescue Ranch, I've got everyone demuted and go right ahead. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. You're great.